Hey there, intrepid iOS developers, and welcome to this quick tip episode of Route 85. So check this out. What you're looking at here is a little app that I wrote that lets me configure this secret robot army I've been building. It's a side project. Don't tell my manager. Now you can see by the storyboard here that it goes several layers deep as I select my robot's personality, mode of transportation, and weaponry. And then we get to the end and, well, I gotta back up a bunch of times in my navigation controller to get back to my main menu. It's kind of awkward. So there are a few ways we could address this. One way is by using code. When I finally select my weapon in the last screen, I could add in a little code like this and everything would work. I jump back to the main menu, but not always. In a simple example like this, sure, I know exactly what order my view controllers will be in, but that won't always be the case. What do I do in a situation like this where I want to jump to this controller here? Well, sometimes it'll be at index one and other times it'll be at index two. So now my code will have to search through the stack until I can find the one I want and then pop to that one. It's an awful lot of code just to jump back to a view controller, isn't it? Yeah. Not to mention that now by using code, I've introduced some inconsistency in our navigation logic, right? Some of our navigation follows segues that I've built into our storyboard, but some of it now relies purely on code that is no corresponding entry and interface builder. If another developer were working on a project, they'd have to start looking around in like all of our files to see what additional navigation logic we've added instead of being able to rely on one consistent system. And we're engineers, we like consistency. So the other option is to keep using segues. Now you might initially think of doing something like this, adding a segue that goes from our final view controller back to our first one, but that would be a bad thing. See, by doing so, I wouldn't actually be jumping back to the first view controller. My iOS app would create a new main menu view controller to put on top of my navigation stack, and I would end up with a giant pile of view controllers like this. Yeah, that's, that's not really what I want. So a better solution here is to create an unwind segue. This is a segue you define in your storyboard, and it basically does what it sounds like. It tells your navigation controller to unwind through all of its view controllers until it gets back to the target view controller that you have specified. Now, creating an unwind segue is similar to creating a normal segue, except that instead of control dragging to the target view controller, you control drag to your view controller's exit object. It's this little icon here in your storyboard that you've probably been ignoring. For example, let's say I wanna make this cancel button go back to my main menu. To do so, I'll just drag for my cancel button to this little exit icon here in my outline and let's try that again. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is the thing that confused me with unwind segues. To use one, you first have to go to your target view controller, the one you're going to unwind to, and add a blank IB action method. In this example, I'll create a method called unwind to main menu in my main menu view controller. And you'll notice that I'm passing in a UI storyboard segue as an argument. Now you have to do this or else Interface Builder won't know that this is a destination for your unwind segues. It also comes in handy later, as you'll soon see. So once I have that in my view controller, I can go back to Interface Builder, control drag for my button to this exit icon here in my view controller, select the method I just created, here it is, and voila, I have created an unwind segue. Now when I click this cancel button in my app, it will jump back to the view controller that contains this unwind to main menu method. And I don't have to worry about where in the hierarchy it's located, which is nice. And now I can use it just like any other segue. So let's revisit our original problem. To go back to the main menu for my last view controller here, I can control drag from that view controller to my exit point to create the segue. Then I'll give it an identifier like I would with any other segue. And then I can call perform segue with identifier to get back to the main menu. Let's see it all in action. Okay, here it goes. Going, going. Oh, much better. It gets me the logic I wanted, and I'm insulated from major storyboard changes, and you know, I get to keep all my navigation logic nice and consistent. Oh, and as an added bonus, if I need this first view controller to grab any information from that last one, I have a chance to do that in my unwind to main menu method. It's kind of the opposite of a traditional prepare for segue method. In this case, I can query the previous view controller, this last one here, before it's disappeared from the navigation stack, which can be very useful sometimes. So this quick tip was shared with me by our very own Gus Class. He writes a number of our sample mobile applications, both on iOS and Android, that you can find in our GitHub repository. He also DJed at Burning Man with a laser light show that he built himself, which is way cooler than anything I've ever done in my entire life ever. So you win, Gus. Um, but what about you? Do you have a quick tip? Do you wear clothing? Well, then have I got a deal for you. Send me a quick tip, and if we publish it on the air, I will send you a t-shirt. What a bargain. And as for the rest of you who, I don't know, I guess don't wear clothes, I'll still see you soon on Route 85.